I'm only three hours away now from taking my AZ303. I've been preparing for this about 18 months now, doing AZ fundamentals, um, administrator, associate. I've done data fundamentals, AI fundamentals, Dev DevOps expert. In the last 24 hours, been just getting myself my bearings on a certain uh, topic areas. Uh, which I need to focus a little bit more on. These last few hours, I've got a couple of meetings, I'm still working. What we'll be doing is, between those meetings, revising, re uh, referring back to the exam outline just to see what I need to do. But other than that, once the exam is ready for me to start, I will be starting here with uh, confidence, but um, nervousness uh, like any exam you, uh, you get the pre jitters uh, worries that you might not be ready but I think you need to make the dive at some stage especially when you've been do <laughs> been uh, learning as you for the last 18 months so let's see how it goes I hope you like my intro. Just to let you know, I've passed my AZ303 exam. I revised for that exam the last couple of months, but I have been using Azure for the, since January 2020. That's when I decided to initially take my uh, AZ900, which is the Azure Fundamentals exam. That exam took me four weeks to study and then take the exam, pass first time. After I passed that exam, I took the opportunity to start using Azure services in work and on troll subscription which then I was able to play around with some projects and understand the services a little bit more. During that time I got a little bit sidetracked on taking the exam. I started learning a little bit more about DevOps and infrastructure as code. When I was playing around with projects I was just getting into how to deploy resources and there was a lot of talk at the time about Azure DevOps, GitHub, and using programs like HashiCorp Terraform. So I started playing around with those. And uh, during that time, I decided to take a infrastructure as code uh, certification, which I passed. I'll talk, probably talk about that on another video. This brought me up to uh, June, July time, which I decided to sit down go through the MS Learn material and finally take the AZ, what was known as the AZ-103 exam. Um, 103 was out at the time, but um, what my learnings were all about was away from Kubernetes and the 104 became more Kubernetes questions and everything. So I st stuck with the 103 exam, passed that in July. Over the course of uh, July and the end of the year, the focus was AZ 303, 304. They just got revised at the time. When I should be doing AZ 303 and 304 studying over those six months, I was getting into more DevOps and infrastructure as code still after taking the infrastructure as code exam. By the end of the year, I decided to take the Azure DevOps Expert certification, did some revision and decided just to uh, go for the exam. I had a free voucher from a Microsoft Ignite event, so I was like, let's go for it. If I pass, I pass. If I don't pass, I won't retake really it. Uh, luckily, I did pass. This brought me to the new year. Um, beginning of January, I decided to um, have a break from any certifications. It was a very focused year, 2020, on certifications and growing myself. So January, uh, end of February, I decided to uh, personally take a break at the start of February I decided to cre start creating content I started my blog at the time and then that's grown into now AZ Community Roundtable which is a podcast now we're coming up to March and March was when I, I was adamant yeah, that I got to get the AZ 303 and 304 exams done by uh, middle of this year the focus was to get the AZ 303 done 
March I decided to start learning the MS Learn content. So this is the Microsoft exam page for AZ303. This just gives you a little bit more detail. Um, before I start, start any exams, I look at the exam outline. It tells me what to expect in the exam, what's the the main topic area, the subject, and what are within those subjects. So I make sure that I create a checklist of each item on here. And before I take an exam, I make sure I review this document because it does tell you if there's been change, a change to the document recently, and it's usually highlighted in red here if anything has changed. Not massive changes do happen all the time. Sometimes it's just recorrecting wording or taking out or adding a few snippets, but like here, this has been added. So uh, configure your AD Connect Cloud Sync. So make sure you do look over this document before you start revising and before you take the exam. So if anything new has um, appeared, then you can just go ahead and revise that new item on the list. If we go back to the exam page, what you can see here is all the MS Learn modules, um, learning paths, of, um, apologies. And what you can see here is there's quite a few. And what I do is I go through each and single one and in each one there's a module and some modules are have exercises in them where you can do a bit of practical, some of them are theory based. There's some content in here that will be video based but most of it will be exercise and there's a few quizzes just to check that you're not you're understanding what's been delivered to you in these modules. Once I've done the MS Learn content in March, April came and Pluralsight started delivering their platform for free throughout the month. By that time I decided to go ahead and go through all their material. Their learning path on Pluralsight is, it has so many trainers as you can see the authors there's so many on this one learning path and the content is hours and hours and hours of content i was playing this when i had study time but when i didn't have study time either in personal time or while working i would play a lot of this content in the background i found that listening to some of the content i was still digesting it not knowingly but i was still listening and paying attention and picking up a few areas some areas I decided to pause what I was doing for work yeah, and actually replay back that content so I could actually listen to it again if it was something I felt that I didn't digest correctly or I felt was important so this was free for the month now is a it's not free anymore I, they do have a trial but I'm not sure if this is included in the trial but have a look anyway and again, that, that brought me throughout the whole of, um, that would have been April now. So that's the whole of April using Pluralsight's content. And then I moved on to Udemy's uh, Scott Duffy. And this, again, was something that my uh, company provides as part of Udemy for Business. So they provide me with that subscription and I get this content included. So I did this course throughout all of May which brought me up to uh, preparing the last week in um, the beginning of my last week of exam studying, but actually in the beginning of June to preparing for the exam itself. And this, there's a few areas um, where I just revisited topics that I, went, I didn't feel strong about. And I used uh, Scott Duffy's content. I used uh, the Microsoft Learn content. I was out to um, build on from there. During April and May, I did have some areas when I was, was studying for AZ 303 and 304. Was I found myself weak on data services. So what I did was I uh, decided to go to the Microsoft Virtual Training Days w website and found myself uh, being able to book a uh, data fundamentals a uh, couple of days with them. 
and that included a free exam voucher so this training was free they provided a free tra uh, voucher for the exam so I decided to do the training day went through the MS Learn content and then to the exam free of charge and I did the same thing with the AI fundamentals I decided to get both data and AI done during those two months so I did the exact same thing and I passed that as well hopefully everything I spoke about in this video it was very helpful what I'll do is I'll put the links in the description remember to like subscribe and comment and I'll catch you in the next video